Hello family, hope you're doing well. Just packing for another week of work. Work is super busy. I'm learning a lot and I am enjoying it, but it does take basically my whole day. And then I exercise, eat, sleep, rinse and repeat. I do try and get up at 5.30, do some Tai Chi, do some reading, try and write some scripts for you, but I'm backlogged. There's loads of other things I need to do with my own personal admin. And I'm feeling this pressure to upload weekly for you, but I need to do what's best for me. So from now on, expect videos when they come out. And I hope that I'll be able to catch up and get some more videos out for you. But today we're going back to China because I met one of you guys who's an absolute legend and we went on an adventure together. So I'm currently in the subway and I'm about to meet someone from the channel actually. He got in contact via Instagram and he's a cool guy. He's got his own YouTube channel doing cool stuff in Beijing. So this is the first time that I've come and met one of you guys. So it should be cool. Eh? So nice on that train, so air conditioned. It's like something 30 degrees at the moment. Luckily I've got the nice airy Tai Chi clothes to help me out. George! Mr. <laughs> Thompson! Welcome yourself, good sir. Finally. Pleasure to meet you. Man, give me a hug. Come, yeah, come, come here, come here. Your boy Munkan Lazao here. I'm from Iraq. I live in Dubai and now I live in China. Okay. Somehow, I don't know how I found your video. Yeah. But um, you the, found me pretty early on. It was yes, like when I was still exactly. in Beijing or just left. I was looking for videos that have, you know, deep topics. <laughs> and boom, George, Mr. <laughs> I, would, I would say Kung Fu, but that is over now. Yeah. It's Mr. Tai Chi guy, Mr. Man. Tai Chi, yeah. Started off Kung Fu. When I will be the, uh, part of the Tai Chi family? You're, you're always, anyone who watches the video becomes part of the wider Tai Chi family. Yeah. It's all about your state of heart. That, that's what counts. Oh my God. Do you know how, <laughs> how that honorable it is to hear that? Master Gu, hi! Yeah, Are we ready for the tour? Let's do it, let's we're do gonna, it. We're gonna take you guys to the most uh, renowned, the most famous university in China. <laughs> let's go, let's go. So, um, this university was built in 1911. Right, quite early then. It was built kind of in a, a foreign treaty between the US government and back then the Qing Dynasty. Because that's a year before the revolution, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Um, uh, the Qing Dynasty had a, a rebellion called the Boxing Rebellion mm. and they were really strong. Mm. So uh, Qing Dynasty needed uh, help from the US, yeah. so they borrowed money, bought weapons and all to suppress that rebellion. So Qing Dynasty back then owed the US almost $30,000, right. which if you calculate inflation, it would be like billions at that time. Right. Um, China couldn't pay uh, their money. And so um, I think the secretary of uh, the U.S. convinced uh, President uh, Roosevelt at that time to reduce the, uh, indemnity to $10,000 for one condition. Right. That they built this campus right. so that they sent Chinese to the U.S. to learn and come and bring education to China. Mm. Uh, the old Tsinghua the architecture was influenced by uh, U.S. American architecture. Mm. However, here, this building, the main building, was built uh, during the Soviet era. Right. Because when the, so. <laughs> exactly. When the communists and the revolution happened, the communist revolution happened, they wanted to be more like a Soviet influence right. university. And so, as you can see, this is like, look like a Russian governmental building. Yeah, yeah, it does. So when they built this university, uh, they said we should have also a Chinese-only university. Right. Yeah, we have, have no influence by any other country mm. other than Tsinghua. Right. Um, the reason why this university is called Tsinghua because it was built Old Emperor's Garden. I grew up in Dubai, right? Yeah. And what is the famous thing about Dubai <laughs> other than oil, of course, okay, yeah. which is construction. Uh, China construction became very involved in Dubai market. Mm. So I was like, mm, if I came to China, learned Chinese, and studied how Chinese mentality is, mm. I can be working with the Chinese seniors back in Dubai mm. and kind of uh, compete with my fellow foreigners in mm. Dubai. Mm. So uh, I thought like to take a course or a master's and come back in Dubai. Right. But um, 
I got addicted, I fell in love, <laughs> and I stayed ever since. Cool. And now, instead of coming back to Dubai to do something, I want to do something in China. Right, okay. And uh, that's why I started my startup here in China. Okay. Yeah. If I if I tell you about it, you're going to be like, wow. Cool. I'm offering money to buy garbage. Cool. For normal people. Wow. And that sounds like, you know, mind-boggling. Yeah. That's what I... In China as well, there's so much of it. Exactly. You know. Here in China, they truly support uh, people with small businesses. Okay. This gate is the old gate of Tsinghua. Right. Before the Japan uh, bombed it, they rebuilt it again to resemble the monument of resistance. Ooh. And so, George, I have to take you a picture yeah. in front of that. Gate of Tsinghua! Are we ready for some Tai Chi? Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Yeah. All right. This is an excellent location. That was awesome, man. I think we kicked some imaginary ass, yeah, I think. Definitely, definitely. Right? Right? Yeah. That's now, the thing with Tai Chi, is just like, there's a ridiculous number of like, like, like attackers from all directions. It's just like chaos. Oh my god. And <laughs> let, let me tell you guys, the harmony, I felt it, I felt it especially when I did the breathing part. Mm, definitely. And I think I should do more. I think you should as well. well. And for all you guys doing PhD, you know we need that. <laughs> Don't you? Yeah, I'm very fully devoted to entrepreneurship mm. and I want to take this uh, spirit back to Iraq mm. because I believe that's the only thing we can come out of this situation mm. is young people um, getting out of their asses and do something mm. and change mm. because we cannot rely on the older generations. They had their chance. It's our chance. Mm. This is our department. Right. All right. Uh, it's one of the ancient and old departments. And so usually uh, when the presidents really visit Tsinghua, they come and visit here. <laughs> yeah. There are many people who experience, uh, experience Middle East but haven't documented it. Yeah. And now there's a new movement of documenting everything. Mm. And we feel that Middle East should have a part of that. Yeah, definitely. Uh, do you see that arc right over there? Yeah. It is in inspired by Islamic architecture. Mm. And I, I, didn't say, I, I don't want to say that this university uh, was inspired by Islamic architecture. No, but when the U.S. built it, it was integrated with many, many architects from around the world. Mm. And so you have a mixture here from every architect. You have uh, the fountain, which is one of the things that we, uh, Spain, are famous for. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that, that's, that's what Tsinghua is, is that you try to gather all foreigners into one place to produce amazing and cool science. Yeah, just fascinating listening to the focus that the Chinese government put on sending Chinese students abroad and like this diffusion of ideas and like bringing the best ideas and vice versa bringing foreigners into China to you know everyone working together for the betterment of fascinating all. this was newly built library by a rich Malaysian guy and most of the libraries here are donated by rich investments hmm. the reason why doing so is that 
they want to be a part of the history of this, uh, this university. Mm. This trip for you, do you consider it as a uh, gap year? I mean, gap year after college. Um, I mean, it's not a gap year kind of has an emptiness to, you know, attached to it. It's just like having fun, you know, whereas actually I've kind of been disciplined for six months, just like learning Tai Chi, reading Taoism and like really thinking about analyzing what I think and, and, and stuff like that. So, no, I'd say that everyone should take this not as a gap year, but as a, like a searching year or a finding me year. May, may I ask, um, when you were young, did you have any idea what you wanted to do in the future? Business has always been, I, I used to sell chocolate bars in the playground. Wow. So, so you have the entrepreneur thing. Yeah, yeah. I'd sell hundreds a day wow. until I almost got expelled by the headmaster. Yeah. I don't know what my kind of idea is. You still are into the journey of discovering exactly. that. Let me tell you something, guys. Uh, when I started, oh, when I was young, I wasn't as entrepreneur person as George. Mm. But later on, when I kind of been alone in this journey in China, I started to question myself what I want to do, what I want to have. And then I started to train myself how to, to become an entrepreneur. Mm. So the reason why I'm saying it is that it's never late to kind of become an entrepreneur. Mm. But my question to you is, does entrepreneurship uh, contradict with the fact of being um, very peaceful or I don't know how you call yeah. it in terms yeah. of Tai Chi. Yeah, tranquil, har like, yes. har like in harmony. Yes, yeah. Starting anything that's difficult is just like the uncertainty of whether or not it's going to work. You know, like before then, education, a job, a nine to five, they all provide this structure and reliability. You're going to get a paycheck at the end of the month. You've got exams and yeah, the exams are tough, but you know what you're doing. Yes. But as an entrepreneur, you have to create that structure for yourself. You yes. have to create that meaning. And so when you're standing on one side, having an idea, and then you kind of, you can see it in the distance, but you have to get yourself there. And then it doesn't turn out the way that you, you planned it would, or just life is naturally like that. So making things that make a difference is tough. That's what I've learned with this year, is just like, trust yourself, you know, like, Uncertainty is natural because the world is complicated. You don't know what you're capable of. It takes a whole lot of courage to trust yourself. And I say it now and I still like, you know, going back home, starting the job, you know, I have these thoughts in my head and you just got to keep on reminding yourself, you're okay, you're fine. Although uncertainty is natural, it doesn't have to be, you have to change the way that you view uncertainty. It's not failure, it's not something to be scared of. It's just proof that you're doing something that's worth doing. So. You know, if you keep on questioning yourself and putting yourself down for not knowing what you're doing, then that's just the wrong way of looking at it. Second uh, question that I wanted to ask you is that when you feel down mm. and um, kind of your biological uh, feelings mm. restrain you in a way that you cannot help but to feel sad mm. and feel um, unsure about your capabilities and mm. everything, mm. how do you come out, out of that? Mm. First of all, just accepting that it's okay to be sad sometimes. And you also find that many people, although you know, thankfully not everyone, is going through exactly the same thing as you. You know, like they have, you know, different troubles, but they have troubles of their own. Yeah. And then that kind of just, in our heads, we think, oh God, I'm like, there's something wrong with me, there's something wrong with me. But in fact, you know, like life is complicated and yeah. a lot of people find life hard. So yeah. just like giving yourself a bit of a break, just telling like, you know, yes, things are difficult. and. Actually, it's okay to be sad because, you know, my brain is wired to kind of create pain in many ways. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so it's only kind of by being aware of that that we can start rewiring ourselves and, and how we approach life. Uh, I remember one of your videos, Yeah. Uh, uh, old videos, I think. Yeah. You said one of the reasons that got you to China yeah. was because you had some... Um, Depression, I think it was not depression, anxiety. anxiety. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Do you think that helped coming here? Yes, 100%. Yes. And in it, I kind of do a three part framework, and that's just how to overcome an anxious thought. Yeah. And so the first stage is to breathe. And because with anxiety, you're constantly kind of like working away, working away, and just getting deeper into this of just like either beating yourself up or, you know, anxious about a certain situation, like, is something going to work out? Yeah. Breathing 
just gives you a pause and just kind of resets you, brings you back into the world. So the second stage is to challenge the thought and really ask yourself, is this accurate? And I mean, 99 times out of 100, it really isn't. There's just so many things that we kind of beat ourselves up for that just, you know, aren't the case. So, you know, a lot of people regret the past and I've had lots of commenters yeah. saying like, oh, you know, how can I get over this stupid thing that I did? Yeah. And that is just a classic human fallacy of kind of simplifying the past and, and thinking, you know, that the benefit of hindsight. Oh, I should, I should have done this. It was so easy. Yeah. When in fact, you did the best you could have in yeah. that situation. And then the final stage is just to observe the thoughts. So the whole thing about you've just got to accept yourself as you are, you know, like I was beating myself up about being weak, for being anxious, you know, like I consider myself as a strong, ambitious guy. And, and you know, then suddenly I was just you know, being anxious the whole time. I was like, come on, I need to be better than this. But, yes. you know, but it's just, it's just natural. It's part of life and just life's complicated. So just accept yourself and yeah, because the real point is, is that I came out to China yeah. to try and find peace in my mind. But so long as I'm looking for peace, I'm necessarily not at peace. Yeah, yeah. So it's this whole contradiction of like, if you're trying to be happy, then you're necessarily not happy. And so you've just got to let go of control and just accept yourself as you are, even if you're sad, even if you're anxious. And so in practice, that means observing your thoughts, not shutting them down. So you can challenge them, but if they keep on coming back, you kind of just try and detach yourself from them because actually a lot of spiritual um, teachings talk about this which is that there is just a part of us that kind of wants to give us pain yeah. and to bring us down yeah. and so it's not necessarily who you are like you are much greater than who you know the little voice in, in our heads exactly and so by detaching yourself and observing your thoughts you begin to kind of give the thoughts less power and yeah. so that these thoughts pop up and they go without changing how you feel. Wow, wow. Sometimes I really, really uh, like fall into that mistake by yeah. saying, damn, I'm not good enough. Uh, I can't do this and I can't do that. And then I, I tell them, I came to China <laughs> and I survived, <laughs> all right? And uh, I, I've, I'm on the verge of taking a PhD. And these kind of things really help. Mm. I mean, you guys have any, many other examples. And we have the power to exaggerate things. Mm. Exaggerate your accomplishments. Yeah. <laughs> I got 10 PhDs. Exactly. <laughs> I'm the president of China. Not only am I'm, I'm going to get my PhD, but the best PhD <laughs> in the world. Of course not, but you uh, know. Well, best is subjective. Yeah. Exactly. It's best in your books. <laughs> Let me tell you a little bit about my startup. Yes, please. Okay. okay. Yeah. So uh, one year ago, um, I, w I, s I was buying a lot of equipment for YouTube yeah. and I noticed that I throwing a lot of recyclable garbage mm. and I was like, wow, let me try to calculate how much garbage I produce mm. and I started to collect recyclables in my room, <laughs> in my teeny little room. Yeah, I was going to say that must fill up quite quickly. Uh, uh, yes, I felt like I'm um, kind of living in a homeless uh, room. Right. And. Uh, I noticed that per week I've been producing a lot. Right. Uh, fast forward, the university held an entrepreneur lecture and a competition. Mm. And I met a girl who wanted to do something about garbage. Right. And I told her, I collect garbage. <laughs> <laughs> and so we developed an idea to buy garbage from normal people right. and sell it to corporation who need it right. using an application mm. and uh, I'm currently building that application mm. having no knowledge mm. of coding <laughs> All right, which is one of the powers of YouTube. Yeah, it's teaching me how yeah, to code. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's how I taught my video skills. Yeah. Right? It's amazing. Modern education. Exactly. So uh, yeah, we're. I mean, that sounds like a complicated task. <laughs> oh, very, very. So uh, before we uh, went into building the app, we wanted to study the market. Yeah. So we started to go uh, into dump yards. Right. And. Um, meet those who actually collect garbage and work like them mm. and ride the, the cart and mm. collect with them mm. and we felt that this is a horrible terrible difficult job for them mm. yet they do it mm. so we 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 thought not only we can um, profit out of this startup 
but we can make it in a way as a social entrepreneurship mm. where the benefit of this startup goes to those who pick up garbage. Mm. Usually those who pick up car garbage are outcasts here. Yeah. You know, uh, oh, they are uh, illegals, migrants, mm -hmm. um, they, are, they don't have etiquette. Mm. Uh, and so by integrating them into our platform, uh, building the awareness about them, using our platform, mm. we will help them uh, by improving their morality mm. and increase their wages. Mm. Because we predict that through our startup, they can earn a lot more than doing it uh, single, singly. How do they earn money at the moment? Uh, so they, they have to sell it to a middleman. Right. And middlemen have to sell it to another middleman. Right. Uh, which is, that is a long process. Right, so you're the platform that connects the people it, who want it and the people who can ex Exactly. Right, interesting. Very Great fast idea. and straight. How, how big is that market at the moment? You know, the, the middleman market, including yeah, the, all the current. So we have two factors here. Yeah. And the factor number one is that the process uh, in China, the process of collecting garbage and everything exists for like hundreds of years. Yeah. Second is that China for this year, starting January, China banned foreign garbage. Right. And now um, all the companies that used to rely on foreign garbage has a lack of supply. Wow. And so it's a kind of a problem we capitalized on. And so in our platform, we will increase that supply. So how big are we talking? Like how big is the market? You know, uh, like revenue or? Uh, I, I cannot say numbers now. Yeah. I cannot say numbers because uh, we're uh, still in the verge of testing our app. Mm. Uh, we have numbers, but I cannot say it so that people cannot quote me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, yes, uh, my, my, whole, my whole vision from that is to take it from Beijing, then China, then Asia, then Iraq. Wow. Yeah. If and so how, how do the people who collect the rubbish, how do they get it to the person who wants it? So um, they collect it from different residential areas, including our university, hmm. and they take it to an illegal dump yard. Right. Uh, those illegal dump yards are always changing. Hmm. So th there's a problem that we need to solve as well. Yeah. Um, the, the middleman, why he's a middleman? Because he has a truck. Right. And, but with our platform, we will make the company who buy, buys the garbage to send their truck rather than middlemen. Okay. All right. Uh, also, we're going to integrate the public to be involved in the process of classif classification. Mm. Because uh, China has really little education in cl classification, mm. such for the no normal public. Um, classification of what? Of, of garbage, okay. separating yeah. plastics, papers right, 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 right. from bio garbage. Yeah, yeah. The Chinese government though, let's say, I, I, I have to be very transparent in front yeah. of the camera <laughs> because we, not, we need to solve this problem. Yeah. Uh, do you see the recycle uh, bins around, around China? I mean, I do, but nobody ever pays attention to them. Exactly. Even the government, they after after they come and Just collect both of them. Yeah, they, they yeah. collect and mix it together. Yeah, it's a classic. And this is one of the things we're trying to solve. There is a lot of startup hubs here, mm. um, and also China for the first time this year started to rule out green cards. Right. Oops. Okay. Green cards. You know? Yeah. You know what yeah. green cards are, right? Uh, it's like a, it's the American visas. It's like a 10 year uh, residency, right? which is one of the most difficult residencies in the world. Right. Do, you, do you hear guys? <laughs> uh, one of the issues that foreigners have here is the visa yeah. in all, all nationalities. Yeah. So uh, yeah, China started to rule that out, but uh, upon categories. Category A are for those foreigners who graduated from the top elite universities. Mm. Uh, have jobs that China really needs, such as you know, computer science, uh, technology, and all of that. Uh, very sensitive jobs. Yeah. That's category A. Yeah. And then category B, which is you know, uh, not very crucial jobs, but also important. Yeah. Uh, the, you cannot get a green card by category B. Mm. Uh, category C is for those who you know uh, teach English, where they don't have English degree. Mm. Um, so uh, this year, those who have category C are really, really suffering. Right. Yes. Yes. Okay. Where are we? 
we are going to a Xinjiang restaurant to eat some good food. What is Xinjiang? Xinjiang is an area, it is an Islamic influenced Chinese mixed with Turkish, Mongolian and Central Asian people. Right. Do you get used to the heat? Well, uh, I grew up in Dubai. Oh yeah. <laughs> but I but lived in China for so many years and experienced the cold, so yeah. it's very hot in yeah. any way. Yeah. And the humid, oh my god. I mean, I'm dripping right now. <laughs> from England! <laughs> Look at this warning on this step. Carefully slide. So what a lovely meal. Yeah. Yeah, thank you so much. My pleasure. It's not the last. And anyone who comes from George, you know, my guest. Wow, well, I appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, George, pleasure. Uh, have a safe trip. Thank you so much. Thank you for the lessons they give me today. Thank you for your lessons. I've master. learned. He's a master. I've learned about Iraq. I've yes. learned about universities I've learned about I mean the Xi Jinping his university and engineering and Xi Jinping I'm looking forward July. to I'm looking forward to editing this because there's there's lots that we covered yeah and yeah and how can people find you what what are you up to uh I shall I tell them I'm not insecure anymore my channel is <laughs> I'm gonna just write it uh, down I'll down have below. links yeah, I'll yeah, have links. yeah 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 but yeah one of the things that uh, uh, George told me is to be more um, proud about my work and just do it even if it's silly I will, I will keep doing it because then you'll find out how silly you is and how great you are exactly right if we don't take ourselves too seriously life becomes a lot more fun Definitely. and luckily you're already an amazing person so you have nothing to be embarrassed about you know we are our own worst critics and we're the kind of the voice in our heads of the things that bring us down so let's have a finale yeah. by saying Zajian Beijing <laughs> <laughs> well what a lovely gentleman he took me for a tour and for dinner and yeah I'm just really grateful for you guys that was just awesome and yeah he's a really awesome guy he's doing sort of entrepreneurial work i'll give some links in the description and he's got a good heart so send him some love guys and i hope you enjoyed that we talked about a lot so if you're at the end of this video then you've done a good job um, but i hope you find it interesting and yeah i don't know what i'm saying now but goodbye <laughs>